Welcome, this is John Highman from Commercial Real Estate Online. This is another video for my friends in commercial real estate brokerage and agency around the world. Indeed, if you haven't visited us before, please check out the website, which is commercial-realestate-training.com. And at the website, you can get plenty of tips, tools, and ideas relating to retail, industrial, and office property. And indeed, this morning, I loaded a particular article relating to shopping centre management and leasing. So that they are all there for you to look at, share, improve your knowledge and also grow your skills over time. And the particular topic this morning was uh, quite deep and it went into many aspects of shopping centre operations. And of course, you can pick up the ideas there and review them as well, if shopping centre is your particular skill focus. So let's go back to this particular video. And this is about the top agent matrix. There are many, many different things in this particular uh, video series, and I'm going to cover off today in some of them. However, the topics are deep and also quite complex. So these are the top skills that an agent would require in today's marketplace to succeed in leasing, sales, and perhaps property management activity as well. A top agent needs to be skilled in many different ways to improve their skills over time, and indeed, they should never stop learning. So let's look at this a little bit further and the top agent matrix with particularly reference to skills. I put here a number of different skills that I believe are critical to a top agent and their performance today. They should be using checklists. They should refine their communication skills. They should always improve their documentation skills because that will impact deals, transactions, sales and leasing, etc. Also finding deals off market, that is a real skill. That's doing something that other agents haven't seen or can't tap into. And of course, marketing skills today is quite important as well with the online and the offline alternatives of marketing. Negotiation is another thing that should be practiced and improved and honed over time. And of course, there should be points of difference in your skills to stand out locally as an agent of choice. Don't be the same as every other agent in your location. Be different, be specific, be deep, be relevant. Presenting your property listing alternatives deeply and directly to the clients. Also prospecting, I'll take you into technology tools that you can use, and I'll also take you into the toolbox approach to brokerage today. But let's go back into particularly skills, and I'm going to cover off on the subject of checklists. So why worry about checklists? Well, in commercial real estate today, you need checklists to cover off on the specific elements of the industry, most particularly inspecting properties correctly. So if you are going to inspect a property, there are all different property types out there and you need to be prepared for the differences of inspecting properties. Of course, the client will see you as more thorough and professional in the listing process and a checklist will help you identify critical factors relating to the property type and the location. And the checklist will allow you to record and store critical information for future reference and negotiation and inspection activities. So there is an article here on this. It is the inspecting properties the right way. It is at the website. You can read the full article there. But further down in the article, I've put a few other things here for you. A checklist for yourself. Number one, checking out the ownership of the property. Absolutely critical. You need to know that you're working with the real owner for the property and they are giving you the true legal right to act on their property and their actual legal status within that property. Number two, get a history of the property as part of the checklist. You never really know what the property has been over the years, what it would be today. And of course, you need to check off the title issues, the research issues for the area, the adjoining properties and the subject property. Many buyers like to know how long the property has been with the current ownership and why they are disposing of the property today. Check out the property history independently if that can be done. Of course, the owners will tell you some things, but not all things. Number three on the list is work through the local development plans. Now, there will be developments going on in the area and they may have an impact on your property that you are going to take to the market for sale or lease. Perhaps there is a current property zoning change. That zoning will have relevance to property usage and legal occupation. Number four on the list here is that if property includes tenants and occupancy, review the leases prior to any marketing activities. 
and if appropriate, if possible, talk to the tenants to get their feedback regards to property performance and landlord support. If there's any conflict between the landlords and the tenants, you need to know it because it may impact inspections with potential tenants or potential buyers. Number five on the list is understanding if the property has been marketed previously or recently. If that is the case, know what did happen with that marketing, how it did occur and what sort of inspections did occur. So the checklist approach can help you with all these things. And number six here is look around the local area to understand the competing properties that may be impacting the future marketing strategy for the particular subject listing. So that's your listing. There may be other competing properties around which will impact your particular listing and your price, your method of sale, your method of lease. Understand that, look through it, understand it. And of course, if you need to adjust your marketing campaign, do so. Number seven on this list is the rental for the current property. We'll include a number of factors of income recovery, including operational costs or outgoings. It really depends on what you call it in your location. Outgoings are the operational costs for the building and sometimes they are recovered as part of the lease structure. So my name is John Highman. Thanks for listening to this particular video. There are many other videos in the series, as you can see here. We'll come to, back to more of these in the next series of videos to be posted online. And of course, you can get the full article on the top agent matrix right here at the website. That's commercial-realestate-training.com. This is John Highman signing off for now. I'll catch you again very soon online.